Hey friends and family, Matt checking in for this week's housing market update. Uh, I'll get right to it. The market is hot. We are seeing multiple offers. Uh, I think just about every home we've listed this year, with the exception of maybe a couple for unique circumstances, have seen multiple offers on them. Uh, most recently, we have seen our last handful of listings go for multiple offers over asking price uh, with concessions uh, for our seller for either free lease, free post possession periods, appraisal waivers, and things of that nature again. So uh, it's a great time to think about bringing your home to the market if you're thinking of selling. If you're a buyer, uh, you know what? It's still a good time to buy. I know a lot of people don't feel that way because of rates and affordability, but fact of the matter is, there's really nothing that points to home prices going down anytime in the foreseeable future. So the cost of waiting, as I shared with you a couple weeks ago, could be significant as home prices continue to climb if you're waiting for interest rates to come down. On that note, one thing I want to share specifically, though, of a, a scenario we're running into quite a bit is that we're meeting with sellers uh, or uh, homeowners who are considering renting their home versus selling their home because they want to make a transition and buy another property. Uh, and just to challenge you on that, and I'm not saying there's not plenty of scenarios where that might make a lot of sense and be a really great investment to kick off your portfolio or add to your portfolio. However, what I see a lot of people doing is they're trading in a primary residence uh, they're taking a primary residence, turning it into a rental, rather than using their primary to fuel the purchase of their next primary. And again, I'm not saying there's not circumstances where that could make sense to turn it into a rental, uh, but there's so many factors. One of those is, you know, right now, if you go from a primary, you've been in there for two of the last five years to another primary, you are likely not going to have to pay any types of capital gains on that with the exemptions, 250 for single up to 500 for married. Uh, but if all of a sudden you rent your primary now, all of a sudden, if you sell that home uh, in the not so or in the you know couple years out, and you haven't been in there two of the last five years, all of a sudden you're you're subject to tax exposure potentially on all that gain. So there's a lot of risk there. But the other thing is, is what I see clients do is they're looking. Let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars of equity wrapped up in your current home. They buy another home. Well, by not using that hundred thousand dollars of proceeds that you probably aren't going to owe tax on towards a bigger down payment on your purchase, this is people deciding to borrow another $100,000 on that purchase at today's rates. And I would submit to you in most circumstances, the math doesn't make a lot of sense to do that versus getting a whole lot lower mortgage, borrowing less money at the larger rate if you can. And of course, the tax equation is part of that too. So just want to put that bug in your ear, but please uh, don't make these decisions on an island. Reach out to us. We'd love to walk you through these scenarios, uh, we think we can bring a lot of value and clarity to that conversation. And then just a quick update, I've mentioned veterans are going to be in a tight spot in the near future as far as uh, the changes happening to how buyers, brokers are being compensated. You're going to have buyers that have to go into a written agreement here in the very near future before they can even look at one home with a realtor, but you're going to have veterans who are agreeing to pay a reasonable compensation to a buyer's broker, whatever that is. And if the seller is not offering any commission to the buyer's agent, then the buyer will, of course, pay that broker what they've agreed to pay. The challenge is veterans can't do that. So it, it really leaves veterans in a very difficult spot where some veterans could be buying homes without representation, which is extremely dangerous, uh, or others just truly just passing on a home that they really would love to look at. But great news came out today. Uh, the, the VA announced that they're going to be making some changes to the regulations. Sometime between now and June 12th, so in the next couple few weeks, they're going to roll out what they call a circular, I guess that's their fancy way to say uh, a change to their requirements, where they are going to allow veterans to pay brokerage fees or commissions to buyer's representation. It's a game changer that's necessary uh, to help our veterans be able to look at all their options in housing and so forth. So loaded conversation there. Of course, we'll update you when that actually comes out and is official, but I will... Uh, put a pin in it there. We're at about four and a half minutes here. Hope everybody's doing so good. Get ready for summer. Happy Memorial Day coming up and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See ya.